let us take one exam question it is said max weber said that it is not wise to apply to public administration the sort of moral and ethical norms we apply to matters of personal conscience it is important to realize that the state bureaucracy might possess its own independent bureaucratic rationality analyze okay this question is given in the end of that notes notes posted to wakelet notes is posted to wakelet so max weber said it is not wise to apply to public administration the sort of moral and ethical norms we apply to matters of personal conscience it is important to realize that the state bureaucracy might possess its own independent bureaucratic rationality analyze so this question is on max weber's model um what max weber gave remember is a model okay what max weber gave is a is a model it is is it is this clear to you so what he gave was a model also called ideal type also called ideal type basic things he said um for something like this bureaucracy goes by hierarchy hierarchy like this okay so it represents a man it's not a woman now is not sociology anthropology convention hierarchy superior and under him some people and under him some others so he said they all go by rules just one second they all go by rules he basically said that uh, there are three types of authority one traditional i'll post material on this charismatic and legal rational okay legal rationally authority is based on law and he is talking about authority authority is not the same thing as power authority is legitimate power is not legitimate okay so tradition tradition based authority charisma based authority gandhi had charisma over his followers head of a family has tradition to have authority over others but collector has the legal basis okay so weber said there are three types of authority and legal rational is more efficient most efficient authority why is it most efficient because it is based on merit based recruitment merit based selection 
merit based promotion okay and uh, it is not loyalty based and then all all are given specified sphere of competence specified sphere of roles okay and all go by rules and rules are set by the owner in a private form in a public form by the political executive so to whether bureaucracy can be public or private infosys has bureaucracy and state administration has bureaucracy collector is a bureaucrat infosys manager also is a bureaucrat okay so to whether bureaucracy is nothing but a chain of officials going by rules and regulations merit based promotion specified sphere of competence with clear role and responsibility okay these rules are oriented towards doing particular goals goals set by the owner this owner is non bureaucratic minister is not a bureaucrat civil servant is a bureaucrat infosys owner is not a bureaucrat but managers are bureaucrats okay so in this arrangement we were made some very important observations very important proposals which are now regarded as controversial question we were said bureaucrat should do as per the rules as per the rules in a value neutral way in a value neutral no personality no compassion so in to weber to weber bureaucrat should not have anything like compassion no personality he should be value neutral he is because only an instrument he is an instrument he is not a person of his own he may have conscience he may have sympathy he may have kindness compassion but they are outside the job because he should do as per the rules and regulations as designed by the owner the non bureaucratic element this is what is called weberian model also called weberian ideal type weber thought one increasing aspect of modernization is bureaucratization more and more people are becoming bureaucrats okay a bureaucrat is somebody who does as told by the rules and regulations because he is predictable because he is doing as per the rules the organization is supposed to work efficiently and deliver the goods so this was the model weber proposed okay in 20th century long ago okay but is this model right modern day literature says this model is not right modern day literature and also your examination the present day civil service thinks that civil servant is not neutral instrumental civil servant should be 
active active goal oriented compassionate okay so this perspective is called new public administration he should have values this is called new public administration this rejects uh the old model okay so this rejects the old model this is called new public administration a public servant should have values goals should be compassionate and act and go by his conscience okay so he should be fully himself okay tell me is this part clear mayank is the issue clear to you yes sir hmm so to create enabling conditions for the people to fulfill their aspirations to create a so enabling conditions so that people can fulfill their aspirations exactly bureaucrat is not instrumental bureaucrat is active he will not go by the rules only he will use rules finally to deliver the goods and what are the goods the well being of the citizens he is a critical person thinking person compassionate person an administrator has values and not he is not value neutral so present day public administration rejects the weberian model so that is what the question is about present day administration rejects the weberian model of instrumentality i am no more other than person doing following rules it is rejected what is the role of ethics in this because you are not following the rules you will have to know what to do you will have to know how to resolve dilemmas because either rules are not there or you are not following the rules but when you are not following the rules it does not mean you do whatever you can but rather you will um maximize the goals goals of civil services okay so you will maximize this that is why you need ethical administration ethical theory all these things so that is what the question is about okay and then as usual to substantiate you give more examples tell me is this clear sir i have a doubt hmm please sir in the uh, in the like in the current scenario we are saying he should be thinking but in the previous scenario was it working fine the new uh, well value neutral approach and unbiased approach okay was it working fine people have realized it was not working fine that is why this change but maybe compared to traditional and charismatic which weber was thinking about so weber did not think of the modern day problems weber thought weber thought that is that is more efficient than charismatic and tradi- uh, traditional traditional means going by the tradition charismatic means going by one leader so weber's view was maximum weber thought of was 
legal rational and bureaucratic legal rational so was it working maybe it is better than previous models it is like that but compared to uh, recent goals that was not working so that is why mankind is progressing administration is improving so did this answer your question it's clear right okay if it is clear then i will go to what cooper has to say on this issue okay karim are you clear yes sir devansh are you clear yes sir hmm okay okay now this is something more in fact till this i did in the of course last course i did this book but before this book i covered this point but cooper handles this in a much more broader way he handles it in the dimension of modern versus post modern not simply weber and non weber non weberian he takes it as modern versus post modern okay this is a very serious issue we do modern post modern in anthropology and sociology but i never thought that is useful in administration and ethics okay modern meant uh what came after 1500 1500 years and uh, 1500 ad like rationality reason belief in science there is one best way okay scientists know science knows these are all the aspects of modernization are you able to see the board okay science knows one best way reason okay this is modernization newton a typical example of modern science in fact newton personally is not so but that is new image of newton okay um there is one best way there is one rational way so weberian model is part of that modernization there is one way to do it i know the rules you do as per told because we looked at it from scientific point of view we know it and all of you should follow so weber's thinking is part of modern thinking what is post modernism post modernism is beyond modernism post modernism says post modernism says is there really one way even if there is one way do you know and even if there is one way and if some people know do you do they know it through reason these are all questions post modernism asks one important aspect of post modernism is there is no one truth there are multiple truths okay so you can't say you know it and you are imposing it on everybody you may think you are right but that is one way of looking at it okay inspired by first kant is the original person original thinker who proposed something called phenomena and then it percolated to others and finally post modernism is there is no one way there are multiple truths multiple opinions okay but post modernists don't say all views are equally valid or equally invalid they just say there is not one way 
it is like that he is not saying you are as ignorant as other not like that okay but don't think there is one way there are many views there are many many truths okay so cooper is saying if there are many truths then in a post modern world weberian model where somebody some people frame the rules and then say this is most efficient doesn't arise because there is no one truth and as we discussed power shapes knowledge is one aspect of post modernism if you want me to link to what we discussed previously if power is shaping knowledge which means knowledge is not ultimate so which means what kind of rules did you frame how are they supposed to lead to efficiency and when you say efficiency in what sense you are efficient what is the criteria of your efficiency just one second okay hmm so what is coming to power previously i cut the phone because he doesn't control me but this i had to take because i need him he has to supply xerox and if he if he closes now i may not have it <laughs> okay so that is the so where are we like power in like this power shapes knowledge so if power shapes knowledge which means knowledge is not ultimate so how can you say this is most efficient or the these most efficient uh, rules how are you determining efficiency first of all what is the basis on which you 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 based your rules authority systems and everything okay so post modernism is multiplicity heterogeneity lack of one view lack of one truth and what does this mean to administrative ethics that is the question reflect on it because usual thinking is that administrator is right rules are there you know, the framework and then he is thinking whether those people are following the rules or not following the rules like that ability to follow the rules things like that so bureaucrat is thinking from his view point of view and looking at the society but is that thinking right at all and if it is not right what should he do that's what cooper is asking take time take time and then you can answer hmm devansh sir can you explain the question again bureaucrat thinks that these are my rules this is it this is how i should and then he looks at the society in terms of his perspective whether he can apply the rules or not basically he looks at the society from the view point of rules and his theories what is that right 
that is the question okay i'll give you a different example you want you have something to say maya no sir i was thinking okay fine i'll give you one example i think this example will make it clear hmm so civil service exam exam only there are cases like this uh, let me tell you please be thorough with the previous examples you 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 are going through that case studies book that's fine but give more importance to previous examples rather than his case studies because there is so much of repetition so basically there is a rule officer is doing one old woman comes without any eligible certificates okay what to do that is the question i think there are two three cases of old woman coming destitute woman now these people describe in a very pathetic way okay and so, then ha uh, yes, so she is uh, as per the certificates she is not eligible for the benefit you mean sir exactly exactly there are so many certificates need needed to be submitted for that scheme to be given to her but there are no certificates then it is not we, likely huh? then we might have to look at some alternate like some ngos or something which is in i mean working in contract along with government or something okay so that we can suppose provide there is no suppose there is no ngo suppose there is no ngo any other benefit whichever is possible exactly. from our end, apart exactly. from that's fine nice so what are you thinking in this you are thinking not just you all of us think that you are right your procedure is right but there is some woman not fitting in so you have to make some adjustment to your rule so that that poor woman also is accommodated isn't it you agree with me right and then you even will say you have to be compassionate enough to take care of that woman okay you should be generous towards that woman but post modern thinking is different post modern thinking is there is a woman who really needed your help who required help and your scheme is not able to catch it so your scheme is wrong yes sir i got it now exactly it should be from all round so exactly. every yes sir so you don't be generous now please Don't be generous. Realize your mistake and correct yourself. You are not to be compassionate. You become compassionate when you think you are right and you are going out of the way to help her. On the other hand, if you don't think that your methods are right. then you will see why this woman should obviously be deserving help but i have a scheme where uh, you can't what to do please in jay okay i'm think of jay bim and one more movie i am recommended republic i will watch that also for example jay bim those people came this fellow was asking how can i help you you don't have aadhar card you have voter card voter id what you don't have anything how are you so officer is saying you don't have anything and how can you i can how can i help you he is not thinking here are the people and how do i have a system where i am not giving anything anything to them so he is looking at them from rules he is not looking at the rules from them from their view point is my point clear yes sir but officer she... serve rule not people hmm what is that officer start serving rule rather than the people exactly 
so but at the Just same second officers should start not only from the people officers should know that there is really no one way no superior way it is just that the truth is a result of multiple views there is no one truth it is not that he should be flexible but it is that he should not think that he is right he should think okay i designed a scheme this seems to capture reasonable number of people but this is not final so let me see so post modernism is refusing that there is one truth sir let me tell you just one second let me tell you i read i knew weber i knew the criticism i read this before but when i read cooper i was shocked the way he linked it administration and ethics to post modernism so whatever you devise that is a way of capturing some people but that is not final that is not ultimate that is not the measuring tool at all because that's one approximate way we usually think that is the way you should go out of the way not you are not going out of the way if you think this is right you go out of the way if you think this is wrong or this is not final you are not going out of the way you are simply responding to the situation so what is taken as you are compassionate becomes in this approach your duty how is this post modernism post modernism is the idea there is no one way there is no one truth there is no one way of rationality if the scheme is not capturing that woman something wrong with the scheme the problem is not with the woman so if the people are not able to address follow the rules something wrong with the scheme if they are not responding something wrong with the scheme so look from people point of view and look from diversity of the people suppose you say this you apply only online finish so many people are eliminated how many people can use online you may say anybody who applies online will be equally treated that is true but by making online you already made it an equal let me tell you this examination may believe in equality but the exam is structured in such a way it is not equal actually it has a bias urban bias particular kind of culture particular kind of upbringing so rules who claim to be neutral are not neutral the scheme that claims to be neutral is not neutral it has a bias of its own this bias will be will be realized when a particular group is not able to respond not able to make full use of what is post modernism post modernism believes in capturing the diversity not believing in one way so this he thinks is responsibility of administration in a post modern world okay deepthi deepthi you raised your hand oh sorry sir i was on mute hmm. uh, okay. sir does that mean 
utility utility is the primary goal because exactly. if some policy or a bureaucrat yes. is not meeting yes yes thank you yeah. that's it that's it so instead of saying that you should be compassionate to go all the way around that means that you are you are right and the other is not fitting but it questions whether you are right so that is what postmodernism so diversity accommodation responsibility people's participation education involvement how do you devise a scheme in which others will take part only when you understand how they think okay you think of many populist schemes you know why there are populist schemes it is because people don't think that the government will really respond to their needs so they have they have given up they have given up expecting so since you are anyway not doing what actually we need just do something we will grab it is like that in a really participatory democracy if people know these scheme these schemes come at a, at some other cost of long term goal long term well being then people will not ask for such populist schemes so all this calls for participatory administration paying attention to the diversity that is what cooper's main point is okay is it clear the right question hmm sunil so uh, going by this criteria then none of the schemes would qualify Criteria. Going by this criteria, none of the schemes should be fulfilling all everyone. Exactly, will not be. So, so it so doesn't. That matter. is why that is equivalent to saying there is no final truth. Exactly. There is no final truth. As long as you don't believe this is final and you should fit, that is enough. So you negotiate, respond, respond to the situation, and responding to the situation as a duty. not going away from your duty <laughs> your duty sir okay right. sir uh please what if a bureaucrat can help somebody only by breaking those rules there is no other way you are supposed to break the rules when you when you know it is very clear that he deserves help in fact one more thing about this examination also like what you should do what the superior when, when suppose superior tells you this about rules also what are you supposed to do break them every example is is, is test you whether you are whether you are willing to break the rules okay but they give so many conditions finally you can you can very clearly say you are breaking the rules not carelessly Okay. Does post truth also take into consider the economic and uh, natural mm. resources? What is that? Does post truth also take into consideration the economic resources and exactly. the other resources? Yes. Because limitation of resources is the reason we are not able to provide to everyone. And exactly. Just, there is a limitation on resource. It can Which never one? be fulfilled. Limitation on resources from administration side. from every side i mean we are yes, see but then uh, uh, participation helps you make it participatory resource is not the only constraint but ideology for example uh, 
guiding uh, self governing institutions panchayat raj will make it much more participatory rather than centralized schemes give some encouragement to village and then devolve funds to the village okay rather than centralizing that is what uh, in that movie bharat ka nain nain so that is what he wrote right and that is good panchayat raj okay panchayat raj devolution and uh, culturally rooted administration paying attention to the diversity so decentralization is in the right is in the is in tune with since to administration participatory administration post modern administration but with certain guidelines and checkpoints auditing otherwise it can be decentralized corruption decentralized responsibility okay so instead of that empower make people participate and make them count so that is how politics and administration are linked there cannot be centralized politics and decentralized administration different okay so let us go through some questions civil servants or citizens in simply imposing authority doesn't work in this okay okay civil servants are citizen in lieu of rest of us the common good is so to speak their speciality he is saying civil servant speciality is common good that is what he is designed the responsibility of public administrator must be grounded in an understanding of the responsibility of the citizen okay this is continuation of what we did last time that is what is the responsibility of administrator he is saying responsibility of public administrator is is about responsibility of the citizen public administrator is acting on behalf of the citizen this is particularly about public administrator not private administrator okay so what the citizen is expected to do that is what public administrator is expected what is required is a new understanding of administrative rationality that is rooted in notions of diversity complexity turbulence and disorder where rationality is not strictly linear rules that are intended to be neutral perhaps but they favor some individual or group in spite of the best intentions continued attempts to be more rational society bring about rationality's own corrosion okay this is all criticism of rationality rationality these are the rules this is how you are supposed to behave okay but he is saying that this rationality may be favorable to some people online is one okay particular nature of the examination these certificates are needed for this scheme okay so that may discriminate the people who cannot get that certificate and there will be some people who for whom that certificate will be difficult so in that way you are eliminating so you will have to think in terms of people and their difficulties and then design the rules otherwise you will not benefit the people who deserve most and then <clears throat> he is linking it to citizenship he is saying that full citizenship requires ability to consume public services this is a new way of looking at citizenship full citizenship requires ability to consume public services so if some people are not able to access public services it means they are not able to become full citizens these are citizenship inequalities 
if they are being discriminated they are not getting the citizenship rights if hurdles are placed in getting the uh, services of the state then restrictions on using the citizenship so hmm. so that means the quest for extreme efficiency using these online methods of uh, direct benefit transfer and uh, for ration and biometrics for ration so they they might be slightly misplaced then so can be misplaced if they are not taking into account what the people's limitations are but they can be useful if they are what is the problem is not with online or offline but rather how for example uh, online monitoring of nreg scheme makes huge difference whether the actual work is being done when the money is paid so it is not online or offline but it is a matter of when you are devising a scheme whom will it uh, help and when you are going online you create an enabling environment where people can use online then it makes it efficient isn't it yes sir so how you use technology definitely it can be used to make the administration more inclusive and more transparent and more accountability is possible in maintaining nreg roles in creating inquiries whether the payment is made properly monitoring the quality of work so my point was that uh, so the quest for efficient distribution prevention of leakages versus reaching the last person who deserves the benefits so sometimes there is a clash between the two okay that may be there may be but you have to think of how to uh, issues of exclusion and inclusion both yes don't try to include the people who who can do without it and uh, you shouldn't exclude both this basically you have to constantly think and work out that is the point in trying to reach everybody you may ruin you may ruin the scheme because of excessive inclusion there can be over inclusion as well as under inclusion problems can be both for example why should there be gas subsidy to many people it is not necessary there is a case of over inclusion rice subsidy over inclusion fertilizer subsidy destructive water subsidy environmentally ruinous so we have to think in terms of over inclusion as well as exclusion both issues or the efficiency should be seen in terms of both efficiency cannot be seen in terms of include as many people as possible because inclusion has a cost to it so it is about right targeting right targeting means exclusion as much as inclusion many subsidies they are not rightly targeted they are not rightly targeted because there is so much of uh, undue inclusion over inclusion over inclusion adds to the burden and makes it inefficient unnecessary unnecessary costs so many subsidies are like that okay so my an- my answer to your question is rationality should be thought in terms of exclusion and inclusion not simply 
how many you can include. It is not like that. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Hmm. It is like that. Right targeting. Okay. So what is the nature of the scheme? For example, NREG. NREG only takes up unskilled labor. Because it takes up unskilled labor, it eliminates the elite. Because they don't do the unskilled labor. And uh, less advantaged groups are favored. For example, women get more than 50% in that. Lower costs get more than their share in NRG. Because the scheme is such that because it is unskilled, uh, less, less dominant groups and economically worse off people are getting more benefit out of that. So there is a nature of the scheme. That is good. Okay. So scheme can be designed in such a way that it should get the right kind of people to be benefited from it. Right should mean uh, right inclusion and right exclusion. You should think of inclusion and exclusion. Okay, same thing about reservations also. Class criteria within a caste will uh, exclude uh, many people who don't uh, really deserve a reservation. Okay. So when, if it has to reach the last man, it has to exclude some people. Okay. In search of a last man, it doesn't mean it will try to do everything for everybody. That is not possible. Okay. So that's all. <clears throat> so let us see what is bureaucracy, a part of modernization, postmodern bureaucracy. Okay, question number six. What is ethical compartmentalism? See, in Weberian model, public is different from private ethics is different from public. Ethics, public life is different from private life, but in postmodern, it is not so. In postmodern, man comes out completely. Not, nothing like public life and private life, private conscience, public conscience. So, that's all. Postmodern, role of policy making. And then equality is not equity. Yeah, we'll discuss this. And then education is important. Education, this we discussed, this role we discussed. What is the difference between equality and equity? Equity is about giving more to those who deserve. Equality is about giving equal. Okay. So when you are treating equally, who are essentially unequal, you are in fact contributing to discrimination. So somebody who is on lower side, you should help. That is a way of bringing equality. So treat equals equally and unequals unequal. That is one way of looking at it. Or going by Rawls theory, treat equally, but when you are treating unequally, the unequal treatment should be that is giving more to the deprived. That is another way of looking at it. So basically don't think that because you are giving equality, you are following a noble principle. No, equality can be the cause of discrimination. So the idea, because why this issue of equality is important in bureaucratic theory is that bureaucracy insists on rule being equal for all. Nobody is above law. This law is applicable to everybody. All are equal. They insist on equality. But equality in the face of an unequal society is not equality. It is discrimination. 
anybody can have access to justice but who will have access only the connected so if you say anybody can have and rules are equal essentially the connected will have um the access so if if you cannot say if you can't believe in equality of law then do you see it undermines the whole structure of bureaucracy because we simply go by rules and they are equal for everybody whereas we see that the equality itself in an unequal society is uh, is discriminatory so when the equality is discriminatory what does it mean then it just means you can't follow any rule you have to be sensitive to the situation it is very easy to say we have this rule this is valid for all and if you are not qualified sorry very easy to say you may say so but remember saying is your limitation rather than your correct behavior there is appropriate behavior it is simply because you are not able to respond to the situation you are saying it it is like that if you can respond to the situation you should do so so if you can't say equality brings justice then what can you say about anything so cooper is raising some very fundamental issues okay and then as we discussed administrator's role is also in education of the public education of the elected officials okay why is education important as we discussed education is crucial to democracy functioning because democracy is going simply going by the majority vote and majority majority and uh, is majority opinion is different from truth so there we have as we discussed there is a lot of gap between truth and majority opinion so what fills that gap education and that's the role of bureaucracy he is talking about public bureaucracy so he should educate the politician he should educate the people okay he as we said in the last class he should be in a position to explain why he did what he did it is not enough to be ethical but he should be in a position to give an account of his actions okay ah oh, please the hmm. educating people wanted amount to um, politicians thinking that he is polarizing people hmm? educating people wanted amount to politicians thinking that uh, the bureaucrat is polarizing people you mean want politicians criticize bureaucrat is polarizing people hmm yes they criticize of course they criticize and the bureaucrat uh, should not yield do you know when dalits talk about uh, caste politicians say upper caste politicians will say it is caste consciousness i mean am i responding to your question or i am not okay so dalit uh, bureaucrat you are saying hmm? you are saying dalit bureaucrat goes for facilitation then it is caste consciousness upper caste people will say he is bringing casteism do you see we have actually and we have actually accepted rawls theory we have accepted unequal treatment constitutionally it is not because we believed that not because we believed in caste we are giving reservations to the lower caste 
it is because we don't believe in cause the constitution doesn't believe in cause but the society believes in caste so the constitution is going out of the way but out of the way here is simply it is going it apparently out of the way but in promotion of equality only. putting differently you can put any in any other ways you can think in terms of rawls theory you basically you are saying equal treatment is discrimination that is the point that is the point if you can get it in a sense treating unequal equally is discrimination that is the point so just one second any talk of muslim consciousness anything about muslim rights or anything others will say no you are bringing minority appeasement you are bringing religion it is like that what majority does unconsciously it should go on but when somebody talks about that then you are making it conscious it is like that so do you know who will say we should abolish caste it is not the lower caste people it is upper caste people why they don't really intend to abolish but they want to say let us not talk about it when you don't talk about it then the whole structure will continue it is like that so we should very clearly understand equal treatment should mean favorable treatment of the weak that's it if you believe in secularism what should that mean if you don't believe in caste what should that mean if you don't believe in gender discrimination what should that mean these are the questions we should ask once we fully understand equal treatment means discrimination that is where you see in the political game it is actually the dominant people will talk about equality or they will say let us not talk about it so these are real issues so if rule being equal to all is not equal then what are we doing but then that is a reality that's a reality people talk about equality but its situation is unequal so by making equality a rule in an unequal society they favor the advantaged the game goes on okay so the idea that the equal should be treated equally and unequal should be treated unequally is a right way to think about a rawls idea where there is inequality then the inequality should be applied in favor and it should be applied and that is justice that's another way of looking at things
So basically, these are all the ways to look at things when the society is unequal and how should administration and government respond to this inequality. So once we understand theoretically, this is how things work, then we can think about what to do. If we don't understand theoretically,